little silent time where you can pray. And then I'm going to close us out in a group prayer. 1 John 1, 9 tells us, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. So let's bow our heads together for a few moments. I'll finish us out in a group prayer. We got a brand new verse this morning, Ephesians 5, 12. This section actually all runs together, and um, we're going to see at verse 17 that God wants to, us to know what his will is, and uh, there's bookends. Um, in verse 10, it says, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. So this whole section here is understanding the will of God for your life. I want to read verse 12 in my New King James, and then we'll look at it in the original language. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. Let's take a look at it. So Ephesians 5.12. The very first word is for, in the Koine Greek it's gar, G-A-R. It's used here to express cause. Why should we expose the evils of satanic utopianism, religion, socialism, communism, revolution, and anti-establishment? It's funny that this subject comes up because this is exactly what the Bible conference was about in Shreveport. It was about exposing how our nation's education system had been degraded um, because we had an infiltration of our colleges first and then our children were exposed to false concepts. And so I encourage you to go back and listen to that. We're going to have a review in the second half. So our previous verse said that we should expose these concepts, that we should roast these concepts, and we, we did happen to touch on a few of them, and we may go back and touch on a few more. It is, is the present active indicative of I me. That's a static present. It is now and always will be. A shame is the next phrase. It's the predicate adjective from Ice cross, and it means disgraceful. The next phrase in your English is even to speak. It doesn't come through in your English Bible, but it means to speak in the sense of upholding or being for it. It doesn't mean really gossip like you think. It comes through in the English like you shouldn't even gossip about that. You shouldn't even talk about what they're doing is so bad. But in the Greek, it actually means to be pro, to, be, to mention it as uh, glorifying it or um, promoting the idea. So we get a little different communication here in the original language to speak in the sense of upholding or being for it like saying I'm for government health care or I'm for free education um, I even have a guy that I respect that's for open borders and all of these things run counter not only to the Bible but to what we know from human history you also have Kai, that's translated and, plus the present active of Lego. The present tense of Lego describes what reoccurs at successive intervals. The reversionist, that's the believer who's in a faraway land, starts promoting that which is false. And any believer can, look, if you don't have a lot of Bible, you're going to get mixed up in what the world's telling you. And uh, the Bible is what promotes conservative thought. And there's a lot of things in this world that run counter 
to conservative thought. The um, we looked at some principles concerning the laws of divine establishment, and we touched on a uh, a modern thought that's promoted by the school of Frankfurt and it has infiltrated our education system and uh, one of those was the fact that housewives ought to be paid for staying at home and cleaning house and rearing children and uh, while I, be, I do believe in paying someone for their effort, look, the payment that you receive as a husband and a wife raising children is having successful children and getting to see them grow up and flourish. We all know that. And so there's contributions on both sides, or there ought to be an equal part in an effort to raise kids. And the Bible promotes the idea of the man being the breadwinner. I know it's not always the case, but the principle is there and that he is supposed to man up and get a, get a roof over his woman's head and make sure her body's taken care of, make sure she's going to the doctor and the dentist and she's got air conditioning and hot water and the things she needs to, to raise them kids. And so uh, there's a big responsibility on the part of man. But what the uh, the indoctrination was the fact that Everything needs to be equal, absolutely equal. And for there to be equality, the woman has to be paid to take care of what she's taking care of. And see, that, that sounds good and noble in some cases, but who's going to pay her and where's the money going to go? So if the, the husband has to write the wife a check for staying at home, which account is she going to deposit it in and what's she going to do with the money? So the, uh, the whole idea is to try to criticize what God has set forth, a system that he has provided that works. And anything that, that, uh, that has the nuance of authority or someone in charge where, where everything is not absolutely equal is disdained with contempt. And so... You, when you have your modern liberal thought, these are the ideologies that are coming through our school systems, and they have been implanted. And if you don't have any doctrine, if you don't have any Bible, you can't fight against it. It says it's a shame to even talk about, promote these things as a reversionist. So this describes what occurs or reoccurs at successive intervals. The reversionist starts promoting that which is false, equality. Satan can never produce it. In the status of blackout of the soul, advocating whatever satanic doctrine appeals to you. The active voice. The reversionist produces the action of the verb in the sixth stage of reversionism. Those things is the next phrase. It's the definite article ho and should be the things which are done as a present active of genomai coming to pass. I took care of that pretty quick, didn't I? We don't want to waste anybody's time, that's for sure. So somebody doesn't know that we're truly conservative Bible exegeting church that I would rather them figure out sooner than later. <clears throat> of them, which should be by them, is hupo plus altos, by means of them. In secret is krufe, should be translated secretly. Now you have a corrected translation.
because it is a disgrace even to speak of or promote the things which are accomplished by them that's in the those in the latter stages of reversionism secretly so there's plenty of christians re promoting satanic ideas um If you didn't know it, the government is is fighting against the two most efficient inventions ever produced by man. Uh, one is the internal combustion engine. It drives you down the road. And uh, because of uh, the magnificent design of internal combustion efficiencies of 100 per 20 120 percent that's 20 percent beyond what would normally be uh, indicated or possible with an internal combustion engine that means it actually produces more power than it should it works better than it should and that's uh there's a, a lot of things that go into that but when you have a pressurized oiling system and all of your moving parts are floating on a film of oil you can defy friction and then when you have uh, petroleum distillates gasoline or diesel and you compress it it behaves very consistently and so you have something that you can predict as far as combustion and then you have the nuances of combustion itself. The different strokes of a four-stroke engine have their peculiarities. And because of some things that happen inside there, you can get a cylinder. Uh, I don't I don't teach a class on engines. When the piston's coming down the cylinder, you get an intake charge, and here comes atmosphere and fuel. You can actually fill that cylinder beyond 100% capacity because of the piston traveling down and some other things that happen in there. You can pack that cylinder full. And so you get an automobile that travels down the road with great efficiency. And uh, what's being attacked? Yeah, our vehicles. And the government is in your car, if you didn't know it. They are in there and they're working hard to make it less efficient and to say that you're ruining things by running it and in fact it's one of the two, there's two very efficient inventions of mankind and that is one of them and anybody who's into science will tell you that an internal combustion engine is an anomaly in the things that are created by man and the second is the firearm and it's uh, much the same concept when you take a firearm and you have a round of ammunition your gunpowder uh, when you compress it and you allow it the same space it becomes very predictable so that every round of am ammunition that's produced uh, can be very close to that which the last one was, and that allows you to hit your target. But not only that, uh, once you compress your gunpowder, and now we have modern per per percussion caps, uh, which the firing pit hits and lights it all off, then you have a bullet that travels down a bore. And not only do we have jacketed bullets now, which came after the Civil War, but the fact that we have rifling inside those uh, barrels makes a firearm tremendously efficient and effective. And uh, the government is attacking our firearms. And at the time the Second Amendment was written, all firearms were military grade. And 
it says that there should be no restriction and obviously now we've got many so the two most efficient inventions of man are being attacked and uh, those who are not in the know would promote such ideologies people who are for uh, green earth policies they will say we're going to take away your car because you're ruining the environment uh, the people who are into uh, they say well people get hurt with guns and uh, so we're going to take away your guns well look a bad guy with a gun guess who stops a bad guy with a gun a good guy with a gun and my guns have never been a, a threat to anyone but guess who a bad guy with a gun so, um, here's the thing. With a car, you can carry the Word of God. You can put that Bible in your car, and you can drive down to the county jail, and you can have yourself an evangelist. Those, you've got a captured audience. That was a joke. I don't have many, but that was one of them. You can drive down there and you can evangelize their socks off and they can't get away from you. And with a gun, you can protect the Word of God. We can have this church service without criminal interference because of modern weaponry. And so the two most efficient inventions that are known are being attacked by not only your government, but those reversionists who do not understand Bible doctrine or conservative thought that is promoted by the Bible. So we could go on and on, but uh, I would tell you right now, the people who are environmentalists now would just as soon you die so that you wouldn't have a carbon footprint on the earth than for you to stay here. And we're not, the Bible tells us we're not going to ruin the earth. We're not going to do it. God is going to sustain the universe until his purpose for the universe is through, and then he is going to take it away. And so uh, we've got to get back to the Bible, and we've got to teach the reversionist why their thinking is wrong. The problem is they've got to listen, and uh, they don't have ears for conservative thinking. They've been indoctrinated by uh, the left and indoctrinated by their music and their friends and everyone else. And so when they hear that it's right to kill violent criminals under pa capital punishment, and that's the way you take care of crime, you kill them by the thousands. You send them to the electric chair. You uh, give them an injection. You shoot them by the masses, and you get rid of them. And then you send a message to violent cri uh, criminals. Hey, this is what will happen to you. That's the way you curb it. That's the way Jesus Christ is going to do it. And uh, the idea that somehow um, capitalism is going to destroy the environment, the free market is going to destroy the environment, and that we've got to get... Um, rid of all of it and we've got to live like hippies and eat mushrooms out from under a log somewhere so that we don't hurt anything and look modern industry is the best thing that we've ever had we've got medicines now we've got living conditions we've got infrastructure that is better than we've ever had before and it's all because of capitalism and the free market so there's all kinds of ways to get off track nowadays, and uh, most of our young people are off track. The problem is they'll never listen to doctrine to get on track, and therefore we got our Bible conference. What happened to America? Well, I want to start in by reviewing um, the Bible conference that was put on by Joe. I still want you to listen to it, so I'm not going to cover his points. But <clears throat> what I do want to um, remind you of, that it was very 
close to what you've seen before, although I did not know about the Frankfurt School in Germany and the uh, the lessons that Joe put together were about the Frankfurt School and he was able to go back and provide detail of the men who put this school together and who were its professors and from whence they came and what their teaching was and so uh, the the guys that uh, the the wolf in sheep's clothing was the fact that many of the professors of the Frankfurt School were Jews, and that the uh, reason that they put uh, a lot of their ideologies together was because of uh, Nazi Germany, and though so the Jews they just happened to be communist also um, they said that anybody who was under the kind of patriotism that germany had is also a threat and see germany's patriotism wasn't a threat to anybody at all it was the fact that they did not respect their own borders and they got outside of it and began to try to subdue other nations. And so uh, God never restricts patriotism. I don't know if you know that or not. Love for country, love for hearth and home, love for family, love for the dirt you have, love for what God has given you, love for the uh, country that God planted you on, where you were born. There's no restriction to it. God doesn't say, okay, limit your patriotism to 85%, please. No, he says, you fight. You fight for what I've given you. You protect it. And somebody, if you fix it up, somebody's going to try to take it. You better be ready. And see, I've told you, under the laws of divine establishment, God takes care of some things, and he expects us to take care of others. National security is one of the things that God says, eh, I'm leaving it to you. He's, he's stepping back. You take care of it. And so under patriotism, you promote the idea of law enforcement. You promote the idea of military. You promote the idea of protecting your country, saluting the flag, honoring those who sacrificed before you, the greatness of your nation, all the things that are uh, positive. And so what the, the first principle of this Frankfurt School was that uh, intense patriotism was bad because it could lead to anti-Semitism. We know that's not it at all. So they went down with patriotism. The second thing that they uh, picked out as a cardinal sin that could lead to anti-Semitism that they saw under the Nazis was authoritarianism. In other words, recognizing authority, its legit legitimacy, and where it exists. And so they began to... Um, work around all the different areas of authority and why they were wrong and how that uh, raising your children under discipline and making them respect you in the home was wrong, that the child is equal with the parent as a member of the human race, and that how the um, teachers should not supply discipline to the students but they should be an equal to the student and how that uh, coaches and uh, things of that nature were not to supply uh, any type of authoritarianism, respect for authority, and things of this nature. And so we understand in the Bible that there's all kinds of authority in life which we are to salute 
and uh, including uh, the laws of our country uh, in the United States. We're a nation of laws, and we are to respect those laws under the idea of family. The parents are in charge, and they set the rules, and they set the uh, a discipline for bad behavior. In the marriage, the husband is authority. And in uh, volition, guess what? You are in charge of your own decision making, and you should reap the consequences thereof. Don't want to go to work? Look, you're going to starve. Don't want to pursue a uh, uh, professionalism? Don't want to pursue uh, any area of expertise? You're going to suffer under low wages. Don't want to accept that God has given you some kind of talent that you ought to cultivate? You're going to suffer. But, uh, of course, those principles are attacked by saying that uh, somehow you were born on the wrong, social engineering, in other words. Somehow you were born the wrong color on the wrong side of the tracks. You don't speak right, you don't look right, and therefore we've got to try to make you equal. And so the Frankfurt School set out to uh, dispose not only nationalism and patriotism, but any uh, ideology of authoritarianism or respect for authority or leadership or tears they just saw that everyone should be equal all the way across the board and um, you could go on now I have given you this PowerPoint before and eerily the uh, Frankfurt School set out and set forth uh, many principles which they taught, which are very similar to these. And although the communist conspiracy in six points, how to destroy America without firing a shot, was produced by Stalin and his uh, people in 1932, guess what? Uh, many of the, the men from the Frankfurt School could have listened or known about these principles and incorporated them. I want to quickly go through these. Uh, it's only six points, and you've seen it before. First, Russia knew if they were going to win the Cold War against America that they would have to discredit Bible doctrine and Christianity. And they recognized how to do that was world philosophy mysticism that's that's including voodooism which is prevalent if you didn't know it it's prevalent in our society it comes from the Haitian roots of a lot of the blacks and uh, mysticism voodooism spiritism Th look this is what ruined the Indians feather not dot Native Americans Look, if a, leaf, if a leaf blew over on the trail and it landed on the wrong side, they say, nope, we're done today, go back home. If the wind blew from the wrong direction, they'd say, no, mm -mm, bad spirit, going home. And not only the fact that they would do they were uh, sacrificial killing, but they be they love killing one another. You think about this: if the Native Americans would have killed every Spaniard that tried to set foot on shore, and they would have captured their technology or enslaved them; if they would have killed every Frenchman that tried to step on American shore, and they would have either ca or could have captured them or taking their technology. Every Brit that tried to step on American soil, if they'd have killed them, captured them, enslaved them, and taken their technology, they never would have lost their country. Mm. 
You can argue. Any argument? They either killed or enslaved any of those, anybody that tried to take their country or come in if they said, no, this is ours. You're, you're our slave now. And what you got there? Is that medicine? Is that a gun? Teach us about it. How'd you make it? But they were too busy killing each other. Hating. Opposing. Scalping. One another. And they were functioning under all kinds of demonistic activities. What's happening to us now? We're being split apart, aren't we? Being driven against each other. Driven to hate one another. And if we can't get together, and I'm talking about every race in America, every background, every ethnicity, if we can't get together and say we're going to lose our country if we don't band together and do something, we're going to lose it. We'll be just like the natives were. And I'm not talking about killing illegals. I'm talking about you can do something by banding together and saying, okay, we're going to lose our country if we don't do something. Liberalism and atheism. We're going to talk more about those later. Secondly, the second idea that will destroy America without firing a shot, the destruction of marriage. to promote free love and communal living, sensitivity training, and, and homosexuality. And if you didn't know it, our own government promotes these things by paying people not to be married and to have as many children as possible out of wedlock. It is promoted. You get money for doing it. You can make a lot of money by having kids out of wedlock and disclaiming all of them with very little income, and the government will write you a healthy check. And this is one of the great sins of leftist liberal government. So, marriage is the most basic institution in society, and it's a man and a woman in the holy matrimony, they call it, but they're joined together, and it's a, it's a right environment for sex, but it's also the right environment for the possibility of rearing children, and uh, so when you destroy marriage, you, ba you destroy the most basic unit of society. Thirdly, how to destroy America without firing a shot. In the realm of aesthetics, cultivate the ugly. Man, if you've ever toured any of the post-communist nations of Europe, you'll see some ugly architecture. Under the socialistic area, they built a lot of concrete buildings to house people in because people demanded that the government take care of them under socialism, and they said, okay. And you see pictures of, of people who were living then, and now they have come out of the post-communist uh, European era, a lot of these Slavic countries. And they're standing there in the dormitory of a concrete building looking out, just waiting for something to happen. Nothing's going to happen. Bible doctrine is what sparks or ignites the idea that God gave us this. We should take care of it. We should beautify it. We should do the best we can with it. And doctrine is the difference. So attack art, literature, drama, and music. Pick a decadent culture that's easily enslaved. Look, get you a tribal beat going. Get stomping in the dirt, in the dust. 
take the music of that culture and introduce it. Further, their beat and contortions attack their culture, any culture that has to do with freedom. And I think that, uh, I don't know, you know, used to you had uh, ballroom dancing and uh, there were some, some of it had very elegant uh, dresses and uh, tuxedos and things like that. And I always thought that that was the epitome of American prosperity and freedom when you saw that. And you saw a beautiful woman with long flowing hair that was fixed and some uh, makeup and jewelry that was very nice. And then that they had practiced uh, a vast amount of time. It takes a lot of time. I'm not a dancer, but I enjoy seeing a couple that knows how to dance and to spin around a ballroom to some um, classy music. And I thought that that's the pinnacle. That right there is one example of American freedom and prosperity. And uh, you take what the kids are doing now, and uh, it, uh, it more resembles the African tribes dancing around a fire with a bone through their nose. Point four, create unrest. Create suspicion. Create revolt. Create class warfare. Create race warfare. And you'll know this now as a our government is thoroughly involved in manufacturing crisis. It is their job now. Uh, they are fully involved in manufacturing a new crisis in which they will have to take control over and they will destroy your freedom and remain in their ivory towers. And so COVID was a completely manufactured crisis and uh, there has been a new round of COVID hit the United States in the last couple of months, a new strain. And uh, you'll notice that uh, we didn't pay any attention, those who understand it, to the masks and all of the things that they promoted. By the way, under Hussein Obama, a law was repealed which restricted the United States government from circulating false information. And uh, now the law is repealed. I don't know, remember the name of it. But uh, now your own government can feed you false information, propaganda, if you will. The border is another issue where they're manufacturing a crisis and looking to destroy American freedom. And our politicians will simply say after it's over, we don't really know what happened. Advocate state ownership and resources, land, money, and no gold to back up the dollar. If you didn't know it, our state is now looking at owning farming equipment. If you, if you didn't know it now, if you're a row crop farmer, if you actually plow the ground and plant seed on a uh, high level, you have to farm for the government, otherwise you won't make it. And if they tell you, we need you to lay your land by this year, and we're going to pay you to lay it by, you have to do it. You ain't going to make it if you don't. All of our grain prices are... Um, manipulated and uh, state ownership is the way of big centralized government and then sixthly undermine patriotism promote international thinking undermine national defense ridicule patriotic effort 
Lenin of Russia added, when a country is selected for attack, we must first of all set up before the youth of the land a mental barrage which will forever prohibit the possibility of that youth being molded into an armed force to oppose us. I'm telling you, when the parachutes open, you fight. It's better to be dead than red. Go out in glory. Fight the communist. They're coming. Shoot at them. No shame in that. Protect your country. Young people, and I'm telling you right now, this is why Ukraine is faltered. The young men over there are, are iPhones and soft-handed. And uh, you should be, if you, they had the Russian invasion on camera when they crossed the border. There was no defense. And uh, I'm telling you, it's better to fight. So there were six points. In conclusion, Rikoff added, it is our duty to inculcate the minds of all nations that the theory of international friendship, pacifism, and disarmament at the same time, however, never for one moment relaxing our own military efforts and the upbuilding of our military establishment. Well, there were six points on the communist conspiracy. They've, they've almost got us. Almost. The only uh, defense we have is the little salt and the little light that we have left here in America. And that's the only thing that's holding us up it's God's grace and the fact that we got some believers that are salty. Okay, we're going to take a little break right here and we'll come. The Word of God's alive and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder, the soul and the spirit, the joints and the marrow, and is a critic of the thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. The man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself an approved workman unto God who needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So I'm going to give you three points of summary. I sat through the entire Bible conference that Joe Griffin taught. And he taught about the Frankfurt School and how our public education systems had been infiltrated by the left. And the purpose was to install a communist style, big centralized government. And um, he says they have been successful. The, um, at the end of, he never mentioned it, but the, at the end, the idea came through the fact if you weren't teaching your kids at school at home around the dinner table how to think around what they were hearing in the classroom and seeing they were going to be another robot uh, that's involved and so you either had to be an aggressively um, teaching parent to offset what your kid was going to learn at public school or you just had to homeschool and if you weren't doing one or the other, uh, your child has probably fallen to leftist indoctrination. And um, so uh, it was amazing because um, there was only a couple of us there that were younger or my age, and two of the younger guys uh, had both their wives are homeschooling their kids. So we were both encouraged by what we heard. We, we, we sacrificed and we did the right thing. It might have cost us, but we did the right thing. And our kids can think their self, they can think their way out of a wet paper bag. And a lot of this generation can't. So uh, we were highly encouraged in the, the lessons. And there was a retirement generation there, and they'd already raised their kids and they're out of the home. So. Anyway, I don't know if they were encouraged or not. They got educated if they weren't. 
I wanted to give you three points of summary that uh, cover after you listen to his uh, teaching, I want you to review these three points because I believe that this kind of wraps up uh, what you're going to hear. While the Frankfurt School and their education system infiltrated our colleges, our liberal colleges here, and turned out professors and teachers that got sent all over the country, and they produced the manuals to uh, teach our children nowadays, we know that that was only one of the problems in the uh, destruction of American freedom. So point number one, you need to recognize God the Father's plan is humbling the enemies of Christ right now. Operation Footstool is in fullest effect. Jesus Christ has ascended into the heavenlies and he has been accepted by God the Father's righteousness. And at his acceptance, God the Father has said to Christ, Be seated at my right hand while what? I humble your enemies. Well, who are the enemies of Christ? Well, we know that it's all fallen angels for sure. But what are fallen angels promoting? Well, we know it's the doctrines of demons, the false gospel. But it's also anything that would destroy freedom. Because Satan hates freedom. Freedom is the environment for the gospel. Freedom is the environment where Bible doctrine. Freedom is the environment where the angelic conflict is resolved. And therefore, Satan hates freedom. So he's fighting against all of these concepts. How is God the Father's plan humbling the enemies of Christ then, Brad? What's happening? Well, I want you uh, to recognize that in the tribulation, when we're out of here, the, uh, there's going to be a lot of trouble. There's going to be a lot of problems. People are going to be groaning under their problems. They're going to be looking for solutions. And since they don't have doctrine or the ten problem-solving devices, they will be susceptible to what? Solutions provided to them by others. And the first solution will be a one-world government, a one-world currency, a one-world health care system, of which, if you will sign up for by receiving your microchip, where we can keep up with all of your records, you can also receive a free education and some other things, protection. As long as you will give us your allegiance. And we know people are going to accept it in mass. In the masses, who will they be? Well, Romans chapter 1 tells us who they are. Romans 1 says God turned them over three times. These are people who went negative at God consciousness. And they said there is no God. There is no creator. You live and you die, and there's blackness on the other side. They're negative. God turned them over three times. He first turns them over to uncleanness. Akarthasaya. And that's not only uncleanness of sexuality, it's uncleanness of soul. It means anything goes. There are no laws. There is no morality. Whatever you say is okay. He turned them over to vile passions. In other words, their sin natures were encouraged. Their sin natures were sparked off by the lust patterns. And God turned them over. He said, have at it. 
He turned them over to a debased mind. And this is the philosophy of leftism. And all of the leftist liberal ideologies. It's funny. When people try to turn you into a racist and they say, well, how? you don't know what it's like. Look at you. You know, you're perfect. You've got a perfect life. And they just judged you. And they were racist in the fact that they were, they projected onto you a personality type of which you may be none of. And uh, I think that Martin Luther King Jr. said the fact that we need to evaluate each man on the content of his own soul. And he was a black man and he was a pastor. He didn't have it all right, but he had some of it right. And then, so they call it reverse racism, where they bring up race and they project it onto you that they're actually project. Uh, they're the ones that are promoting racism. A debased mind. In Second Thessalonians two ten is probably one of my favorite verses. How much do you love the Bible? How much do you love the Word of God? Do you love the mind of Christ? Has it ever set you free? Has it ever given you power? Has it ever promoted things in your life like peace? Some of the things that we, uh, some of the beautiful things that we get from the Word of God are the fact that we get to live with tranquility in our own souls, knowing that God is in control. The peace, not having to worry about the circumstances of life because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He holds all things by, together by the word of his power. It's amazing, the word of God, what it does inside the human soul. It really cultivates a wonderful life. And I, because of that, I love the word of God. I love to look at a verse and apply it. And um, early on, I, I had a love relationship with God because of his word. And that's how God makes love to us through Bible doctrine. What well, says in Second Th Thessalonians 2.10, because they did not receive a love for the truth. God sent them a strong delusion. These strong delusions are false systems of thinking that promote atheism, that have contempt for Christianity, that hold all things of faith in contempt. They've rejected every concept of a creator. Last night the moon was shining. And I just wonder how many people set their crystals out. Let their crystals feed in the moonlight. It was funny because, you know, I'm getting my lesson ready on the ride back from Texas three hours in the car in my mind. And on the radio, as the moonlight is shining in the window of the car, the song comes on, Dancing in the Moonlight. It's a wonderful song, but it talks about the supernatural power of the moon. It's called lunar worship. In Romans, it's, it says that they are under, under contempt for worshiping the created rather than the creator. Be careful. There's a myriad of these personalities out there and God has turned them over and he has sent them strong delusion. 
so that there will be hordes of people that go into the tribulation and hail the Antichrist as the Savior of the world. And the spirit of lawlessness is already at work. That means these things are already in motion. They're already gathering power, momentum. The only thing that is holding them back is pastors like me warning you about what's to happen. And when when we're going and pastors like Pastor Louie. Look, Pastor Louie. The last thing we need is the government supplying us housing and food. It's the very same thing the Antichrist is going to offer. Go get it yourself. So God the Father's plan is rolling like a great cart with wheels. And it's going to humble the enemies of Christ. And we know that the unbelievers that go into the tribulation are going to exist in the millions. So this brings up point number two. Your era of human history, where are you at? See, the question, it's a question. Point number two is a question. Where are you in human history? Where are you? Well, I'm going to tell you where God puts you in American history. He puts you right at the end of the second golden era. Right at the funeral procession of America. We went from the second golden era, which was the trifecta of truth. We had Billy Graham crusading the world with a clear gospel. And people were getting born again by the droves. We had Ronald Reagan in the White House outlining conservative thought. And we had the colonel cranking out 50,000 tapes a month that were sent all over the world. I was in church at this time, and my pastor said, we don't really know why America's not mentioned in biblical prophecy, but I will tell you, if the rapture happens today, America will cease to exist. We were in that kind of revival. And now we're here. And God has put on our shoulders the casket of our very own nation to carry to the graveyard. And we look back 40 years from where we came and where we are now, and we understand why the shortest verse in the Bible says Jesus wept. He knew what was going to happen in 70 A.D. So here's what I'm saying. We got to see the greatness of America. And I'm telling you, America is the greatest nation that has ever existed this side of the Roman Empire. We've set people free. We set terrorist souls loose from their bodies and the slaves loose from their chains. We flew our flag. We won wars. Subdued communism. The greatest nation the modern world has ever known. We came out of that and here we are. I'm going to tell you, 
God dropped you right in this era of human history because you were tough enough to see both of them. Not many are. Oh, it hurts. And we know why Jesus wept. But he said, you can carry it. You can do it. It's painful. But the reason I'm dropping you right here in this area of, you, of your own country's history is because you have enough doctrine to glorify me in it. So there's a few of us left, and that's point number three. Don't fight the effects. Be the solution. The solution is salt and light. Adding believers to the pivot. The question is, am I part of the pivot? Me, myself. Am I a salty believer? Am I a light-filled believer? Am I a part of the solution for my own country's prosperity? And whenever the pivot expands, like we had in the 80s, prosperity comes. Whenever the pivot shrinks, as in now, judgment comes. We can reverse what we see going on out here in the news. We can reverse our education system. We can reverse the border policies. If the pivot expands to the point of prosperity. See, the tilt, the justice scales have to tilt. The pivot has to become enlarged. And then you'll see blessing. But as long as the pivot is shrinking and we're not replacing the believers that are going to heaven, you're going to continue to see problems just like the Frankfurt School supplying the thought for our education system. So what I'm telling you is while the conference covered the Frankfurt, Frankfurt School with great detail, it is an effect. All because of a shrinking pivot. Don't fight the effects. Be part of the solution. Because you can get busy out here fighting the education system, but you're not going to win unless you put yourself in the pivot. You can fight the police system that's broken and the jurisprudence system that's broken, but you're not going to win unless you're part of the pivot. You get it? Salty first. Light first. The conspiracies to destroy American freedom are a million fold. They're all sponsored by the same person, Satan himself. The only way for your country to have prosperity is for believers to add themselves to the pivot and call down the blessing of God. You see, that's how we do it. So there's three points. First, God the Father's plan is humbling the enemies of Christ, and we know now the multitudes of unbelievers that are going into the tribulation are going to be humbled. Secondly, God dropped you in this area of human history because you're tough enough to handle it. You know reality now. The question is whether we will get a revival. We're praying for it. Thirdly, don't fight the effects. They're a million fold. Be part of the solution by adding yourself to the pivot. I'm going to pray and we'll be dismissed. Our Father God in heaven, we thank you for Bible doctrine, for without it we wouldn't know where we're at and what we're doing. Just thank you that your word straightens it all out for us and that we can be witnesses in the angelic conflict for you, the prosecution. We thank you and praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen.